Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome you to the Planning Commission meeting for this evening of August 13th. For those of you who wish to speak tonight, please remember to address all comments and questions to me, the chair, and keep your comments brief and on point. If you wander off, you may hear the gavel gently reminding you, please don't wander off point. If you simply want to stand and agree with the previous speaker, you're welcome to do that. And all you have to do is, when it's time to swear you in, we'll swear you in and you can speak at the appropriate time. So to expedite tonight's meeting, I will ask all those who wish to testify or who think that they may testify. You don't necessarily have to testify, but if you think the spirit might move you, then you need to be sworn in. So those who th are thinking they may want to testify tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Okay, thank you, you may be seated. Before we begin our meeting tonight, we're gonna to keep with the tradition of saying the Pledge of Allegiance. So let's stand and say that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Has anything changed on the agenda? No, sir. Okay. The first case we have tonight is case number 19400-04, short-term rental of 9630 East Linwood Boulevard. Would the staff please give the report. Yes, sir, Brian. Brian Critfield for Better Places LLC seeks to operate a short-term rental business at 9630 East Linwood Boulevard. As you look at the uh, screen, the oval shows the location on the site on the northwest corner of Linwood and South Overton. The city limits are shown in the darker line to the west and south. This is the rezoning for the area with the property again in the oval. The site along with other properties in the immediate area are zoned R6, single family residential. This is the aerial photo of the site, again with the property in the oval. The, this application is unique in respect that, that it will have two separate rental units on the site, the main house and the guest house. The main house is on the south side of the property which is on the bottom of the slide there. Uh, the guest house is, on, is just to the north. Single family homes surround the uh, site in all directions. This is a slide provided by the applicant. It's an aerial photograph showing the house, the parking area, the guest house, and additional parking along the street. Okay, here we're on Linwood looking north into the front of the house. Can see our little rezoning sign there. Uh, here we're on uh, on uh, Overton, looking uh, west, primarily at the main house, which is on the left. That is as it faces uh, Linwood Boulevard. This is the guest house. What I'm calling the guest house is the second uh, dwelling on the property. And it also has the driveway in the photograph there. From the information available, this is a non-conforming situation with these two houses on one lot uh, that has been in place for many years prior to the applicant's uh, ownership. This is the house directly north of the site. This house is on the east side of Overton across from the applicant site. And these two these two uh, photographs are properties that are on the south side of, of Linwood, 
across from the applicant's property. And this is the house that is directly west of the applicant site. And you can actually see the edge of the applicant's property there on the slide. <clears throat> Staff recommends approval of this application subject to the following conditions. Short-term rental shall obtain a business license in accordance with city code and, and comply with Article 3, Chapter 5 of the city code. The occupational license number shall be listed on all advertisements and on, and on line platforms. The business must comply with all standards established by sex, section 14, 420 of the city code and then uh, is required to provide a total of four improved, which would be paved, parking spaces for guest parking. We estimate that the, uh, we get back to this, that there's probably two or three here. Um, we would, because the street is narrow and uh, there's really if you park sort of in the gravel area, which they're not really supposed to park in, uh, there could be a problem. So we want the parking lot, excuse me, the driveway widened or in some, uh, some other fashion to provide four spaces for off street parking. Okay, thank you, staff. Uh, does the commissioners have any questions of staff before we uh, pull the applicant forward? All right. Would the applicant please come forward? Uh, just make sure you give your name and your address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Brian Critchfield. Uh, 9630 Linwood Boulevard. Mr. Critchfield, could you speak up a little bit louder, please? Brian Critchfield, uh, live in Independence. 9630 Linwood Boulevard is the address. Okay. And I guess the first question is you, you're, you're doing this, but do you plan on still living at the residence or are you moving to a different place? No, sorry. I actually live um, not too far, about five ten minutes oh it's not exactly the same address okay no what was the address again that you gave me this well i gave you this address 9630 linwood boulevard but where do you live my current property is 15408 east 44th terrace okay. independence one five yeah. okay and about how far away are you from the uh this property it's maybe five miles okay uh just tell us a little bit about i mean we understand what you're trying to do, but if you want to add anything to the city staff report or can tell us anything more about it, we'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, so I bought the house in uh, 2016, March. Um, we live there. Uh, we have done a lot of improvements on the house. Um, basically, we, like, like they said, it's kind of a unique setup. So um, my mother lived on the property for a little while. Um, we kind of took the opportunity to, uh, we tried to use it as kind of like a long-term rental thing in the back house. It didn't work out so well. We actually lost quite a bit of money trying to help some family members. Long story there. Um, but uh, we heard from a friend um, or a couple different people the idea of short-term rental. Um, I was a little leery of it at first, you know, just because the idea sounds like, oh, a lot of different people coming in and out. Sounds not like a great idea at uh, face value. Um, but then after looking into it um, and kind of scoping out a few different places that do it, I realized it's actually kind of the opposite of that in the effect that um, everybody that comes in is already pre-screened. Um, there's an insurance policy on everybody that comes through. Um, when you hear short-term rental, I think the first thing that people think is like a recovery house or something like that. You know, people who are like transients, uh, need somewhere to stay for the night, something like that. But it's actually, like I said, kind of the opposite because it's people, 99.9% .9 of the people that I deal with are business travelers. Um, a small portion are family uh, on trips. Um, but like I said, most people are in town for business. And you can kind of pick and choose who, like what kind of, group you want to bring in um, and they always you know they have to put in a request before they ever come in um, so you get to set all your rules beforehand say you know this is the type of 
location you're coming into this is this is all our house rules this is you know the rules of the neighborhood and all that kind of stuff um, basically everything that we have generated the revenue has gone right back into the house you can actually if you would have seen this property a year ago you'd see that it looked a lot more rough than it does now I just recently paved the driveway we redid completely redid the porch um, redid a lot of the outside structure put the gazebo in patio plants uh, all the landscaping so uh, a lot of the interior um, we actually had kind of a disaster with all the raining we had recently um, and a lot of water went into the basement unfortunately so all that money that we've made it's not a ton don't get me wrong but every bit that we've made has gone back into the house and we actually went in and uh, completely uh, fixed the basement the foundation and everything so that was really cool um, other than that, I would just say uh, it's been a really great experience learning um, kind of a different trade, uh, meeting people from out of town. They kind of come from all over. Uh, people come in, like I said, for business. Um, a lot of people come in to see the games. Uh, this one is actually right close to the stadiums. Um, and then uh, me and my wife, we have four children. Uh, it's been a really cool experience uh, teaching them about service to others because um, you actually you run the place kind of like a hotel so the people come in and out and you you clean the place it stays squeaky clean um, you replace all the stuff you clean the bedding and, and all that kind of stuff so um, they've gotten a really good experience with that I started an LLC just for this um, that's the only thing I use my LLC for um, helps me keep track of expenses and stuff that go into the house for tax purposes um, so my kids have gotten a really cool experience out of it I've learned a ton um, and it's just a really cool business to be in, um, totally different than what I thought it would be. Um, and it's just really cool, like I said, to bring people into the city and, and tell them about independence and kind of direct them towards the sites and stuff like that. So, so do you use uh, like a website or in, do you monitor that or is it like an Airbnb website or? Yeah, there's a couple different platforms that I use. Airbnb is one of them, uh, VRBO and actually booking.com as well. They all function pretty much the same. Um, in the fact that the people are already screened before they come to you. They send you a request that says, hey, this is what I'm coming to town for. Um, did that answer your question? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it, it did. And it sounds like you actually meet some of these folks from time to time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. quite often. All right. Are the residents, the people that stay, are they rated? Like, you yep. know, with Uber, if, yep. you, if you ride in an Uber and you're a jerk, you get a bad rating from the driver. Yeah. So is don't they do that on Airbnb? Absolutely. Right. Uh, actually, the host and the guests are all at the mercy of a rating system, right. which is pretty powerful. Because mm -hmm. uh, if I don't keep the place really clean, act very courteous, um, answer promptly, mm -hmm. stuff like that, then I, it'll lower my rating. And pretty much anything less than a five star, they'll kick you off the platform, you're right. done. So um, same with the guests. They do mm -hmm. have a star rating and comments right that are pretty telling so so if they're loud or they're mm -hmm. destructive and at any of the you know at, at any other airbnb place or any other verbo place mm -hmm. they get a bad rating and and that's you can see that so so yeah. you could say no to that person if their Absolutely, ratings are low yeah. and not only that if i mean if somebody's destructive or mm -hmm. like uh, or loud loud extreme mm -hmm. like a, say they get the police call or something mm -hmm. I mean that could get them kicked off the platform altogether right. okay. so just one bad incident right so they're kept in check pretty well so but like I said I've never had a bad experience I've had maybe around 100 people come through and I've literally had not one experience where I had to show up and calm things down or or make any phone call at all really mm -hmm. it's it's been all positive for me personally Okay. Does anyone else have any questions of Mr. Critchfield? Okay. Thank you. We may call you back. Okay. But, um, thank you very thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case? Okay. Is there anyone here who would like to speak against? or who has questions? If so, you need to 
start towards the microphone up there. And since I know a couple other people walked in, I just want to make sure that if anyone is coming up to speak, if they have not been sworn in, just remind me and we'll make sure that you're, you know, that you not. need to be sworn in. Were you sworn in? I have not. Okay. Raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear to do something? Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Thank you, sir. Make sure you give your name and your address for the record before you start. Chuck Palmer, 700 South Fuller. Okay, sir. Um, mostly I'm just, I have a question. Yes. Um, is it required to be licensed before a B&B &B shows up in your neighborhood? Well, it, it, I think it's one of those things that was happening under the radar and the city recently changed their policy. Okay. And so there are some, for, there are some folks who are coming forth voluntarily. Um, there are a lot in our city that nobody really knows that are around. So some of these folks are coming forward of their own free will just to go ahead and make sure they comply with this, uh, uh, with this new ordinance that was put through. Okay. I don't know if the city has any more they want to add to that or not. Well, staff did some research on the various platforms and found uh, listings of the ones in, in the city and sent out letters to them advising them that they needed to come in compliance with the city code. And that's why we're seeing a string of them now. Okay. We've got a few on the next few agendas. So, yeah. Yeah, so does okay. that answer your question? That question. And I had one other. Uh, related to your noise reporting to the Airbnb or whatever, are neighbors allowed to identify a noise problem that someone who lives five miles away might not hear about? Well, I've not redone it myself, but I'm sure there is a way of doing that, if not to the Airbnb, to the police. Because <laughs> we wouldn't know what group well, sure. is renting this. Well, and I'm sure, and I, I, I'd say most of the owners of these platforms that we have talked to, they, they don't want any trouble. I mean, they don't want to disturb, have the neighborhood disturbed. So they would probably appreciate neighbors kind of keeping an eye on the place. I'm just wondering if, it, if since it's a city regulation now, mm -hmm. is it reporting back to the city or is it to like the phone number was sent out on the notice letters that we received? How was that, how was it reported or who to? Well, I'm gonna ask the city. Well, right? if it's a noise violations, you would call the police or any sort of action like that. Zoning is, is, doesn't deal with violations of that type. We would probably note it in the file, and if it keeps reoccurring, then we'd relook at the case. But just for an instant like that, zoning wouldn't uh, be involved in that. It would be a police matter. So it would be a police matter for noise, parking? Yes. They deal with all that? Whatever. Yes. Licensing or issue for one year. That's correct. That would be part of the uh, review. And therefore, when that particular property would come up for a new license. Yeah, it's conceivable. Certain city staff would look at if there had been complaints from neighbors about this particular property being in the service before reissuing a new license. And yeah, that's, that's generally correct, yes. And would the neighbors then be notified again with that license is renewed? Uh, I don't know. No. Just this initial? No. Okay. 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 Well, I think because the initial notice just lets you know there's a change in zoning or conditions of zoning, and then once it's enfor enforced, as long as they keep their license enforced, okay. then it continues. So if something would happen where it was a continual problem and you had to continually call the police, then besides calling the police or talking to maybe someone in zoning, you would probably have to actually talk to your city councilman. Okay. We had an applicant this summer that made sure to give the neighbors his information so that if anything happened that, that he could, he, they could call right away, which I think would be nice for the neighbors that surround this house. Yes. Especially if there's any damage to their property, I think yeah. they'd want to know. It, it would be extra eyes. Okay. Yeah. Too. Thank you. As this is essentially a home business type of uh, operation, there's no rezoning or anything. And the, the underlying zoning remains single family. Well, thank you for that clarification. 
I was just trying to say that once it's in place, they just it stays there. But as a business, they have. I mean, we got it ups the game on the rules they have to follow, right? Yeah, it's just like any other type of business. All businesses are the same way. Okay. Put your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Linda Robinson. I live at 403 North Delaware. And you were sworn in, correct? Yes, I was. Okay, thank you. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so I came today just to kind of get some general questions answered about um, the Air Airbnb that is proposed to be in my neighborhood. Okay, go ahead. Um, I guess what I'm hearing is that... Excuse me, ma'am. Are you here for the Delaware case? I am, but this is a general question. Okay. This is just a general... I'm trying to find out whether... There is going to be um, um, something called spot zoning, where you're going to change the zone for a particular parcel of property so that it can be operated as commercial. Um, I also want to know um, what happens should that um, Airbnb decide to discontinue business? Can they, or can they sell that as a business? Can it be sold as a business? There are just a lot of general questions that we have about um, our neighborhood and sure. um, what happens to those properties in the future. And there seems to be, as I see on the docket today, there are quite a few homes that are interested in pursuing this line of work. And so um, how much as a neighborhood or wh where do we set a limit sure. to how many that we can have in our community? It's a lot of questions that I'm hearing I, I realize that, <laughs> they're, and, they're, and they're good questions. Again, I'm going to defer to the city because they know more about the rules. Well, the underlying zoning of the property does not change. If the Airbnb stops, people move or whatever, then it goes away, just like it would be for somebody giving trumpet lessons or whatever else that we do for home businesses. Uh, conceivably, although it's never happened that I recall, somebody else could move in here and, op you know, uh, some, the property could be sold and then the next purchaser could operate in the same fashion that the current owner does. And like I said, I don't see that a lot with this type of operation. Generally when they, they're done, they move away and it goes away. But, but it's possible it could be sold and uh, continue in the same fashion that it would be. But they would have to get a new business license. That's well. correct. Anytime when a, a business changes ownership, they get a new license. So you wouldn't be able to operate a different business? No, it would, no it, it, this okay. is just f for that reason. Uh, so if right. someone else wanted to come in and completely do something different, they'd have to reapply. My question to the city is, he's actually operating this as an LLC. So therefore, if the LLC is sold to another owner, how would you know? Because it would still, he, they could still operate it under that LLC name. Um, uh, I don't know that perhaps our legal department could answer that question. Does he want to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go ahead and, yeah. And, but me having said that, I don't know that it's that big a deal, but I just, putting it out there. Well, I'm concerned, uh, as I think we're all concerned about the saturation mm -hmm. as well. Just in the past mm -hmm. two or three months, we've had um, one, another, one Airbnb, mm -hmm. there's at least uh, four in our neighborhood, and that's just probably within the past few months. Um, how do we limit that? I mean, as residents of that neighborhood, we should have a say into how many of those are in our neighborhood. How do we do that? Well, if you were interested in exploring that, again, you'd probably have to talk to your city councilman and find out if there was any support for doing any kind of ordinance limiting these. However, I'm sure that there's always a bad apple in the bunch somewhere, but I think most of these folks are very interested in keeping their property up and keeping it looking good and running a good business because, like I said, if they, if they get a bad rating, Nobody's going to go in there. So, but you have to understand, as a residential neighborhood that has young families with children in it, we now have opened it up to a revolving door of strangers in our neighborhood, and that's not something we want to keep adding to. I understand your point. However, I I, I take your point is taken. So it appears that we would think of 
We would think that independence is a new market and that this is a new venture. Actually, and I don't mean to offer criticism of any applicant here or imply that any applicant here has operated historically for the last two, three, four, five years, but we know factually that many of the applicants that are gonna come forward have operated in their neighborhood for years. It's simply now that the city has formulated some new policies, new ordinances, and people are coming forward in an effort to comply. I don't think you're gonna find many of these entities to be new operators. I don't know which one is or which is not, but many have operated in their neighborhoods for years. And fortunately, we have not had much in the way of complaints with the police department uh, on Airbnb type properties. But most of these businesses have operated already. They're simply in an effort to comply with policy. Let me go one step further. In my efforts to be competent as a member of the commission and as a commissioner, I decided to study what has happened across the country, not just here, not just in Missouri, but from Chicago to New York to San Francisco to New Orleans. What I have discovered is the, this format has provided an opportunity for families to improve their property because they now have additional income streams. What that has done to most neighborhoods is improve property values, provide additional revenue to municipalities, and the community and the neighborhood overall is generally better. That does not speak to any one particular property, but to the overall concept. I, under, <clears throat> I understand that completely. I have stayed in Airbnb in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., San Francisco, mm -hmm. and I've always stayed with a family that was using that income to help pay their mortgage in these mm -hmm. costly cities. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know um, whether the owners of these properties actually live in the community in which they have these homes. So um, what I see is an empty house that is empty one week, maybe filled the next. And I also know that Airbnb has also pushed uh, low-income people out of their homes as well, all over the country. Um, so there's all, if, but there's an upside, there's always a downside. From a policy point, we are new to this. And what you indicated I, re I found in a number of cities where the owner must be residing on the property or that property had to be a commercial entity, uh, that is zoning had to be commercial. I think what you will discover and hear that we, policy in the city is going to evolve relative to what happens in the marketplace. There has been concerns in some of my studies that will Airbnb dry up the market for long-term rentals and lower income individuals? Absolutely. That is another question that we will have to deal with mm -hmm. from a policy point. And I shouldn't say we, because the commission does not formulate policy, but the city will have to formulate policy as this market matures. Let me ask one more question, please. Sure. Um, what is the benefit to the city for these kind of operations? Mm -hmm. What is the tax basis or what does the city get from mm -hmm. this kind of uh, operation? There's a tax that we, that's collected. Well, true. business license fees and then the, the tourism hotel tax type sure. thing. There so is. Hotel tax does apply? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So to me personally, when people come forward, I, that's one of the first things I ask them, do you live in the city? Because to me, that's important. I don't know that the, that the uh, ordinance that was passed actually specifically says that, but it should. Mm. It should. 
Mm -hmm. So because that's we, one thing that you could talk to your city councilman about. We already about. have corporations that own uh, slumlord properties all over Independence. Well, that's and true. And we don't need to have um, no. these businesses we to don't. be operated by people out of by or companies as well. I would agree with you. I would say that it's important to me that the owner lives in the city, that the owner cares for the property, and that he treats it as if he would when he lived in there. So I think is all you can hope for is that the property is well taken care of, that the people that stay in there are well behaved. Um, because if he just decided to sell to somebody, he could sell it to whoever would qualify for it. And you, as you know, some people get good neighbors move in and some people get bad neighbors move in. So, um, but your, some of your points are well taken, but I would say, I hope that answered your questions. It and answered quite yeah. a few of them, and I'm gonna listen for some more information. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let me make sure you give us your name and address for the record, and you were sworn in, correct? Yes, I was. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. My name is Phil Rockaway. I live at 9625 East Linwood. Okay. It's not the property next to the one with the right van. I have a lot of concerns about our the neighborhood, and by putting in an Airbnb or a VBO, whatever it's called, V, whatever. My concerns is our neighborhood has a flooding issue as it is. We have a stop sign at the corner there that nobody stops at. You start putting vehicles into this and you have families coming in here that we don't, oh, sorry, we don't know. And somebody runs that stop sign and misses and hits them. Who's liable? I mean, I'm sure he's gonna be liable for this but you have issues preventing a safe area for an Airbnb. The flooding is, is a key issue. I know that the city's been saying that they're gonna fix it for five years, but it's been, we've had the worst flooding this year. I've lost my driveway. Rocks have just flown out in the street on Linwood Boulevard, right across from the west house on this their basement and the house next to them flood the stream comes right down the side of my property all the way through to that point and it leaves a puddle of water in the roadway and when that freezes if you don't live in the neighborhood and you don't know how to drive in these streets you're gonna you're gonna get into an accident and i'm concerned about that sir I understand what you're saying. I don't know that this is, I don't know that we can do anything about that, but uh, I sympathize with your problem. Um, you know, you, drivers are responsible for their own actions, so hopefully they're good drivers. You could also have someone drive through that neighborhood and decide to answer cell phone and go through the, the stop sign. So your point is, well, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I don't think it really applies to our narrow focus here of deciding whether that should be a B and B or not. What about the people that don't know about this area and how it floods in the cold, freezing rains? That is a big ice pile there. People. Well, then I would stop call signs. maybe call the city and tell them oh, that they need to call put the salt. City. I understand, sir. I understand. Uh, that's just not part of our purview here to, to deal with this type of situation. So my, in my experience, if you have a, something like that, you need, to find, you need to actually come down to the city hall and you need to be a thorn in somebody's side to get something to happen. I am a thorn in somebody's side, well, but it's you can be a thorn in my side, but I can't do years. anything about it. So <laughs> you need to find the but person the, who, the who needs to do something. The problem still I, goes to safety. And of course, somebody else could this. drive through that neighborhood that, you know, that wasn't staying there and the same thing could happen. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. The speaker does uh, bring to life one particular point. 
we know that in long-term rentals that there are inspections required. He mentioned flooded basements, of course, which give rise to mold and other unsuitable situations. Do we have in the code inspections beyond the initial inspections for short-term rentals? Well, I, I, I believe the, uh, the initial short-term rental inspection is included in your packet. And I believe, to my knowledge, that they come back annually and do fire inspections along with you know, other businesses all over the city. So. Okay. Are they, so like for the inn above Ophelia's, there is a hotel inspection that has to happen. I mean, it's specific to make sure there's no bed bugs, to make sure there's no, you know what I mean? That there's no things that could cause health issues or that I'm keeping things clean. Is there the same standard for Airbnbs? Uh, the only inspection that's actually done meets our code as far as what's in our, our city code for uh, short-term rentals. And that's included, it's done by the uh, fire department. Uh, as was shown in your packet, the health department does not inspect these properties. Okay. So who does inspect them? Well, the fire department inspects it for uh, zoning requirements and fire Excellent. requirements. But the health department does. No, they, they have a, a minimum, I think, of like four. You have to have four uh, guest rooms in, a, in an establishment before they inspect it, I believe. It's some number that they don't, they don't uh, before they become involved. Okay. All right. Do you have any more and questions? And then the 10 bedrooms. I have an issue about 10 bedrooms. I don't know where these 10 bedrooms are in this place and how he's going to rent it out for with 10 different is it two different building two different rentals all together and you get a, a, a Chiefs game you know they're gonna run to the stadium they're gonna come back all drunk well I shouldn't say that I apologize they come back happy <laughs> politically <laughs> correct okay I'd rather have and them come back cause happy grief than in the neighborhood mm -hmm. you know if it, I understand Airbnbs are important to the city I got that but you got to worry about the safety of this neighborhood that they're going into. And we've been fighting this over and over for years, this flooding. This is the worst thing so far this year. And I know they're working on it. They say that every year and they're, they're gonna get it taken care of. But it, I don't know where these 10 bedrooms are. You got in that back house, I've been in the house. In the back house, is there? I, I believe there's two bedrooms in the back okay. house. Well, we can we can ask him and find out. Okay. Okay. But there's two bedrooms there, two bedrooms in the front house, and in the basement, are there six bedrooms down there? We'll all the out. applicant. All, all the we can do is all we can do is ask. I I haven't been in there. He, he just but mentions sleeps. four bedrooms, four two bed. in the main house and two in the guest house. I don't know is where the correct? ten. I think it just sleeps ten. Is uh, that what it was? Sleeps ten. Yeah, that's yeah. different. Than so it's bedrooms. four bedrooms. So he's right on the cusp of being inspected by the health department, right? <laughs> Stuart, I don't think I've ever heard you say that well, before. Well, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's by unit, and each of these would be two units. I see. Okay. And they would be two units. On this I got you. All right. Well, I wish you luck, sir. I wish we could do something for you, but well, tonight. You're, you're not. <laughs> Thank well, you. that's not going to help your flooding problem, though. Well, I understand that, but it's the it's not the flooding because we're working on that. Sure, okay. it's it's so you that up. the people running the stop signs at Linwood and Thirty First Street. I'm more concerned about the people coming in here that that want to that he <coughs> that he wants to show to the, the city of Independence, which is a great city. I've lived here for over 20 years. Mm. Love this town, but you got to worry about safety. Okay. And that's my major concern because the street is not a okay. safety issue. All right. Well, thank you. Good point. Good discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Would you like to answer any of those questions, Mr. Critchfield? You have an opportunity to answer the questions or to, for a rebuttal period if you want. Thank you. 
by the way. I uh, appreciate it. And I, I have a really good relationship with the neighbors in my neighborhood, and, and I have the safety um, and their well-being of the people in the area definitely in the forefront of my mind, for sure. Um, I totally agree with the flooding part. Um, I think that's kind of a separate thing, and I really hope we can address that. Um, I was just going to say one thing about uh, as far as traffic goes. I've noticed um, a good portion of the people that do come in, it's more of like an Uber kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They uh, taxi Uber, um, and they do kind of stay on the property. There's not, I haven't had an experience where there's like 20 cars that come to the same place. Um, and as far as the bedroom thing, I would just want to clarify, it is total of sleeps 10 between the two places. So that's counting like a queen that sleeps two. So there's more than one queen in there. So that's four with two beds, so. Okay. And the, the parking situation you're gonna take care of? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, there is, there's parking there. Um, I guess the, they want a little more pavement there. I right. just did pave the driveway actually, um, but I have a great guy that'd be, I'd be happy to put a couple yeah. more spots if I need to. Um, I've not had the traffic that would, I think, justify the need for more, but if I need to, that's totally fine, yeah. Okay, and I'm glad you said that. I was going to ask you if you were, were agreeable to the recommendations of the city that oh, you would do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, does anyone have questions of Mr. Critch, Critchfield? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call the public portion of this to a close for this case. Did you do any huh? Okay, does anybody uh, have any comments, questions of staff, anything to say about this case? I have a lot of questions, but it's, but it's, it's gonna be generic, really about all of them. But it seems to me, I feel like with the, with the onset of this, I feel like I, what I really wanna do is be, be kind of irresponsible and hand it back to the city and say, I really think it'd be a good idea to do a sharp study on this and really figure out how do how many can a neighborhood stand how many on a street sh should be allowed because it's a good point about a residential area having too many and that could happen very easily and very quickly and then also who does the inspections and i do believe it should be a different inspection than a business inspection i think it's it's fine to make sure that it's got a fire extinguisher but there's a whole lot more to make sure when you're actually bedding someone and I just feel like we're leaving it a little wide open. It just doesn't feel tight, I guess. So I have a lot of questions wrapped up in that, but that's basically my concern. I just feel like we're putting the cart before the horse, I guess, or I don't know. It just doesn't, something doesn't feel right. I don't know. I agree. I, I, I would love some kind of... I mean, I think I agree. I, 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 how are we going to manage all these houses? Yeah, and I'm a huge supporter of Airbnb. I think they're a great addition to cities. I just yeah. don't know what. I don't know what the limit is. I don't know how many yeah. one street can handle. I think we need guidelines. Yeah, because you could change the face of one street if you had too many in a neighborhood. So Bu just to, building uh, on what you said, what I found in a lot of cities, Airbnb was operated in an owner-occupied residence. In order to have an owner absent, the property had to be zoned commercial. That is what I found to be fairly standard fare across the country. That is, an owner could could have multiple properties, but he has one residence. And if those, uh, let's say those other two properties were zoned residential, that was no Airbnb allowed on those properties. If they were zoned commercial, then he had his homestead and Airbnb at those. What we're doing is Airbnb a uh, short-term listing, I should say, short-term rentals, 
apply to anyone who apply, uh, makes an application, whether they live on the property or not. That's almost wild, wild west. I think in an effort to accommodate this incredible opportunity for homeowners, we need to make sure that we are not absolutely changing the character of neighborhoods. Admittingly, many of our, these businesses that are coming forward have operated for years and probably have been good neighbors. But now that we are in the process of licensing, perhaps we should pause and take a serious look at policy. What is best practice? Are we being good stewards by licensing short-term rentals in properties where the owner is not on site? And I'm sure there are other factors that should be considered. I will say I think I'm almost positive looking back on the Airbnbs we have approved that the owners lived very close. Mm -hmm. um, right? Yes. 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 And the, the two that we approved were more in a, um, I can't remember what the zone was, but it's in a business zone. Yeah. So that was a little bit of difference from this particular case anyway. That's, I don't believe that's correct. They weren't commercially zoned. So they're not? They're, are they both in residential? No, the, the one across from the Truman the Home. And oh, adjacent. It's just something close. The city hasn't arbitrarily set a, a deadline that these people have to get a license for or cease operation? Uh, no, they have not. Okay. Then I would move that we postpone consideration of any more of these, of these small short-term rentals. I'm making a motion. Uh, short-term rentals until we get some direction from the city council. I make a similar motion. Now, <laughs> I can, I can, I'm sure Billy can, and I, I might be able to myself, expand on what we want to know. But I think that we could talk about that at another, you know, now, but not right now, because we're considering this case. But that's, I would, I make that motion, and if I get a second. I second that motion. First of all, uh, the chair can't make a motion from what I remember. Well, there's my man right there. Okay. okay. So and make just, a motion, Billy. Just to make sure I understand, so you're making a motion to continue all these cases well, that Billy are on the is. agenda? I'm not. Okay. The commission <laughs> is making a motion to yes. table all these cases. No, I didn't say table it. I said Can, postpone it. We don't have well, something called postponement. We'll it's either continuance or a table. We'll continue it. Okay, continue. Uh, until the, what, about, what, are, what is the commission looking for? Something from, some direction from the council on well, where they want to go so on that? It, or what? We, I think that we need time to formulate was, some questions to give them, and they need to be able to answer that. <laughs> so you're talking about somewhat of a moratorium. No. So what if the wording is that we would ask for recommendation from the city, or we, rec we would like to recommend that the city does a study in creating policy oversight requirements of an Airbnb, and then which might lead or could lead to an actual ordinance? Because this is a thing. It's not going to go away. Yeah. It's a, and it's, it is like we said, it's not bad for the city. It just... It feels yeah, I don't think we're against it. We just want to make sure that we're not doing something that's going to harm the city. This commission is. Are you going to word this for us? Are you going to make it pretty? This is like well, the bees. Yes. This is not this our. Is, this is not is our like wheelhouse. I would say if you're going to make this motion, be as specific as possible with what you want the council to look then, into. And that's, that's why specific? I think we need to take some time and Maybe. talk no, about it. Okay. I mean, if it's no. a limit on them. No, you know, no, please be specific close. on. I'm just. Go, Billy. Don't leave it as wide okay. open as. This motion will be no different than what we did, as White has stated, concerning when we were reviewing bees. Yeah. Therefore, what I propose here, and I move that we table, defer, 
actions and considering applications for short-term rentals until we have had an opportunity to do study and come back with appropriate guidance that will permit this commission to act in a responsible way. I think what we're presently, we're short on. Therefore, I move that we table further considerations of applications for short-term rentals until staff has had an opportunity to review for best practices and formulate appropriate ordinances. Do I get a second? I would if I could. I second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. We don't ever second. Is there, are there any further discussions by the commission members before we take the vote? And yes, there is a discussion by the chairman. The chairman wants to be able to, I think everyone needs to be able to tell you their questions and you write them down so that we can come back with specific answers because we all have different questions. And I don't want to just throw it out there and then they come back and only half our questions are answered. Well, uh, as you have our email, uh, perhaps you could do the reply that, and that would be fine send us qu me. the questions and we can uh, work on the answers. Okay. So that, I don't know if this is appropriate or inappropriate, but a lot of people came tonight and I wouldn't mind hearing, I'm a pros and cons person when I'm making a decision. I have my columns and then I gather my information and make my decision. So, I mean, I would like to hear what everybody's pros and cons are. I think that would help the city in, because you're all right here. It would help the city kind of have an idea of what to look into and what the concerns are or what the non-concerns are. Is that a thing? Okay. Okay. Chair says we're going to take a five minute recess.
Thank you, folks. Recess is over with. Uh, what, what, what I'm going to ask the city to do is, again, read the motion. We're going to vote on the motion. Basically, what this motion is doing is it's, it's putting all this on the table. It has to go to the planning commission. They have to do some research and have to come up with more specific recommendations about what type of short-term rental conditions are going to have to be followed in the city because all of us up here feel it's like it's just too general right now. So if this passes, what that means is that the meeting's over tonight and you'll receive new notices about when there's going to be a, a public discussion about this. So these folks that are operating, they're going to continue to operating as they are right now. So without fear of penalty without fear of penalty okay so if there is a question about this i'll allow one or two people to ask a question otherwise i think i've been pretty clear if you're going to ask a question that's fine but come up to the microphone please and state your name and address please so you're number one. One more person can ask a question. Mr. Chairman, Debbie yes. Twyman, 416 North Delaware, Independence, yes. Missouri. What about all of our neighbors who are sitting out here who came and are very concerned about what's happening in our neighborhood in terms of rezoning? Are we all going to get a notification when you're going to come back and discuss this? How are we to know that there, these changes have been made? Well, uh, we send out notices to property owners within 185 feet of the applicant's property and let them know that th there's going to be a public hearing for this, for this uh, uh, short-term rental. That and they're welcome. Not within 185, 185 feet, but it still affects us. Well, I'm sure that the people that live within 185 feet will pass that information in, through the neighborhood. This follows what state law says that we do for rezonings and all that sort of thing. This is not a rezoning anyway. The Given property the still remains zoned residential. Given the level of interest you are finding from members of the community here, isn't there another way that we could be notified? Doesn't seem like an unreasonable request from a person who pays taxes. Uh, excuse me. First of all, you need to speak in the microphone. And second of all, I'm going to ask the the... I'm sorry, I'm having a brain freeze. Please, please address that question. Um, so what we're proposing tonight is that um, after getting some comment from the commission, what we're gonna be doing is coming back at another public hearing at this planning commission in order to hear, and with the public hearing, with public comment to hear um, neighbor concerns. We'll incorporate those into a draft changes, and then those will be um, voted on here at the Planning Commission, and then those, those will eventually go to City Council. So how will those things be posted? How will we be informed? So, sign, so at, for the um, short-term rental in your neighborhood, you those signs about will... having a change in policy. Yes. That's not a change in zoning, right? You're just... No. Right, first right. You're that's correct. a change in policy. So how will we know when you have a meeting that's a change in policy? How's that going to be well, we don't mail out notices to all properties owners in the city, so the only way to really know is is to check the uh, planning commission uh, agendas um, and the city seven and so forth to get that information. It's no different than we do for any other type of uh, ordinance change in, that we have in the city. We're not. This will come before us. And we're going to make sure that they understand the questions we have and some of the questions that you guys have had. If you have questions you want answered, I would contact the planning department and with a list of your questions. Okay? Mr. Then, Chair. wait, then when we come together, we're going to simply talk about this. Now, we will recommend it go forward or not go forward to the city council. So, we don't have the final say on this, but we're just trying to improve this policy. So, and I think that's a fantastic idea. And I think I well, see you. Room when I say that. I 
Yeah, she needs to get her. So we're all behind okay. that 100 percent. All right. We just want to know how we give input. That's well, I think I just, I, I think I told you, right? So you can talk to them or you can talk to your city councilman, okay? And I would just make them a written question. So could we have the information about how to contact you public, right, publicly right now? I'm assuming that there may be people, God forbid, who are watching. For, first, ma'am, could you be sure to speak in the mic? All this is recorded and everything. And sure, I don't have any business cards with me, but uh, if you want to give me your name and phone number on the back here, I, mean, I can. You could just tell all of us your email, you. and then we'd know, and it would okay. be. Uh, hold on a second. Are you okay with that? Got to, somebody's got to uh, answer the calls. Sure. Okay. All right. Well. I'm assuming this is a public well, email. <laughs> it is, but. Or you can start with them and call me or put my, here I can write my n number there. Also. Everything. It's on the website. Everything is, everything's posted on the website. Ma'am, listen. <laughs> I know you're upset. I know you're all energized and stuff. Upset. Well, you sound upset. <laughs> so. There's ways to find that information out. They're going to help you, okay? That's cool. So do you have any other questions besides this? I guess, Mr. Chairman, my concern is that if there are people who want to contact these individuals and to give input, that that should be a part of the public record tonight since this decision is being deferred and since you have very wisely decided that the city needs to develop a new policy and since that policy affects large numbers of individuals. Well, everybody in the city it will affect, yes. Yeah. And so it just seems logical to me that we would include the contact information within the context of this meeting. Okay. Well, he's going to do that, and I'm, or I will, okay, I've been directed to read this. Just give me a moment. I just wrote my phone number and everything on there, would you? No, 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 this, this speaks to this. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. This will be, should be no different than what we have done in the past, especially as relates to the bees. What we did was staff decided it would take approximately 60 to 90 days in, in a study. We then designated a date that we would come back and have discussion and receive public comment. We can do that without much delay here. Do we do it? the September, October, the second Tuesday of October, whereby everyone here knows factually then, if that's the date, or the second Tuesday or the fourth Tuesday of October, we'll uh, come back and we won't make a decision, but we'll have discussion and receive additional input and comment. Hang on just a minute, let me look at a date here. Okay. Is we it October? Just, should we do October 8th or should we do October 22nd to allow time? Uh, the, probably the 27th, 22nd 22nd. is probably okay. a better Would you please add that date to the motion then? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Okay. Mr. Jordan. The director, there's an email up here that, and a phone number that you can contact him. If anybody wants to write this down, I will have it with me after the meeting's closed. So anybody can come up here and get it from me, okay? Fair enough? All right. Yes, ma'am. Name and address for the record, and you are our last speaker tonight. So I congratulations. I am Ruder, 630 North Delaware, Independence. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to add uh, the comment that I would really appreciate it if you would include consideration of the historic district when you're considering what the guidelines should be for the uh, short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. We actually had a little bit of that in our discussion. So and we are sensitive I would, to that. I would suggest that, a, that uh, talking with a historic preservation officer would would provide some good information for that because I served six years on the Heritage Commission and we were protecting the district all the time. In the yes, in the, so that she would be a good resource for information for you all. Well, thank you. Your suggestion is well taken. And can I just say one thing? I, 
<laughs> Eric's like, no, you already ruined the whole yes, night. You may. Um, I think that those of you who want to say something, um, while we appreciate, and of course, transparency, I believe is huge. But I think that if you keep your comments like you just did, which are bullet points, it's so much easier for people to listen. And you can get across a very important statement in a bullet point. And so I think that when you email Mr. Jordan, I think that remembering that will be helpful because it, it, to weigh through chapter books of paragraphs of stuff, it's really hard. And I do think this is a really important decision and can affect the city in a really positive way if we collectively do it together. And so I would just request that on his behalf, if when you do, they are just really succinct bullet points and things that like get right to the point, just like that. And would we, you know, would you want to consider, would there be special consideration for a historic district? How many are allowed in a historic district? I think though, I just think that way of communicating is really vital, especially in this situation. Thank you, your point's well taken. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, the city's having a little discussion here, and after their discussion, we will have a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Okay, Stuart, could you read that motion again, please? I'll try. I have faith in you. Okay, we had a motion from Mr. Preston and a second by Ms. Wiley. And this is to table all the uh, special, excuse me, short-term rental applications until further study by the city council and staff to come back with recommendations, recommended actions for revisions. And we, we would have a meeting on October 22nd to discuss possible po policy changes to the current ordinance after that's in place, after the ordinance would be in place then we would bring these cases back up and put them on the agenda for consideration, okay. which would be unknown at this time. All right. Okay. All commissioners on board? Yep. Okay. Then we're ready to take the vote. <clears throat> Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Com Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes, this has been tabled until October 22nd at 6 p.m. when we'll have our planning commission meeting. Thank you all for your participation and your patience. Have a good evening. <laughs>